most dangerous thing right now is uh, the Taliban uh, put in roadside bombs or improvised full devices along with the uh, victim operated pressure plates which uh, victims step on it and they go off. Uh, pretty much that is our main concern now since the Taliban is either gone but we believe they're hiding and observing us. A week ago, 4,000 U.S. troops moved into Helmand Province in southern Afghanistan to stomp out the Taliban influence there. Here with us now to explain the situation, Emmy-nominated journalist who's covered Pakistan and Afghanistan for more than a decade, Gretchen Peters. She's author of the new book, Seeds of Terror, How Heroin is Bankrolling the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. And you know, Gretchen, we have a very complex way of getting authors on our show. Uh, you got on our show because I was walking through an airport and I saw your book. And I said, the timeliness of this could not be better. We're launching this operation basically because what you've written in your book. Explain how the heroin trade is bankrolling al-Qaeda and the Taliban. Well, most of us, when we think of the Taliban, think of these bearded uh, warriors living in a cave somewhere, wearing a turban, uh, holy warriors fighting for Islam. But uh, I've spent about five years studying their operations at, a ground at the ground level, looking at how they fund themselves, and they really behave much more like a, a mafia or a criminal street gang uh, than, than holy warriors. They're, they're hardly behaving like pious Muslims. They're, in, they're deep, deep into the drugs trade, uh, human trafficking. Uh, kidnapping rings, all sorts of stuff. Uh, the Helmand River Valley is a major financial engine for the Taliban uh, because they're earning hundreds of millions of dollars every year off of the opium trade. Uh, so the Marines moving in there are trying to cut them off from those very important funds that, that keep the insurgency afloat. And you also have in your book title that it also funds al-Qaeda. Can you explain how that happens? Absolutely. The Taliban, the Afghan Taliban I'm talking about, uh, control the drug trade and, and other criminal activity inside Afghanistan up to Afghanistan's borders. From my research where al-Qaeda and other regional and international extremist groups come into the equation is when the drugs are processed, they reach the Afghan border, they're going to be smuggled to other parts of the world, the Middle East, uh, to Russia and to the West. A lot of it ends up in Western Europe. Uh, so this is where you actually stand to profit the most. Uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of evidence that uh, al-Qaeda operatives are helping protect drug shipments uh, as they make their way towards the West. Time Magazine's Rick Single. Rick. Gretchen, um, actually we have a story about Stan McChrystal and what's going on in Afghanistan in the magazine this week. And one of the, one of, part of his counterinsurgency program is to try to get the farmers in Helmand province and elsewhere in Afghanistan to convert from growing poppies to some other kind of agricultural product. Um, the problem with that seems to me to be that you make so much more money from poppies than from anything else that so you Michael could possibly Dukakis grow. So Michael Dukakis indive how strategy you, may not work. How could you actually make that transition and, and change the way the culture works in that regard? Well, I think it's going to be a very, very long uh, and difficult process to shift the farmers off of poppy. However, um, what we're seeing in the in the northern parts of Afghanistan is that people are shifting uh, shifting away from from growing poppy because the, there are so many poppy fields now that the, it's so widespread that the price is actually dropping and people are shifting to to growing wheat or pomegranates or other crops uh, because the price is dropping. What uh, General McChrystal and the, the uh, uh, Pentagon are trying to do is actually uh, put the focus off of the farmers uh, and onto the uh, trafficking groups, the, the cartels that run this. There's a huge number of people who are engaged uh, in the poppy trade at the agricultural end, but they really don't earn that much money on the balance. The real money is earned uh, in the refining and the exporting of drugs. And uh, what I argue in the book is that is that the the focus needs to be taken off the farms and put onto the traffickers. That's where the real money comes uh, into the Taliban and into the trafficking groups. Hey, uh, Gretchen, that begs the question, given the profit levels and the self-funding mechanisms involved in the, in the heroin trade in Afghanistan, doesn't it point to a larger problem that we have to deal with in that area of the world, and that is governmental corruption, both in Afghanistan and in, in Pakistan, among government officials? 
Absolutely, absolutely. I, I always say that I think the biggest challenge in this region is not going to be fighting the Taliban and Al Qaeda, uh, who are making hundreds of millions of dollars a year off the drug trade. It's actually going to be fighting corruption uh, because we don't have particularly reliable partners to work with either in Afghanistan or Pakistan. It's a very big problem. Uh, for some reason, nation building uh, became a dirty word in Washington under the Bush administration. I believe the only exit strategy for Afghanistan and Pakistan is to try and help uh, foster the development of more uh, of better governance, of rule of law. These areas where the Marines, for example, are moving into in Helmand have literally not been governed uh, in, in decades. They've just been mm. allowed to, to drift, and we're seeing the result of that. Lawless, ungoverned spaces are magnets for uh, extremists, for criminal gangs, and that's exactly what we're seeing in the border areas between Afghanistan and Pakistan. But it's a tough neighborhood. I'm not suggesting yeah. this will be easy. All right. Hey, Gretchen, thank you for being with us. Uh, very timely book. We appreciate it. Thank you. The book, Gretchen Peters, Seeds of Terror. Fascinating. Uh, coming